of the reading of scripture from the gospel this morning, Luke chapter 24, beginning with the 28th verse through the 35th verse. As they came near to the village which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Last Sunday was a glorious Sunday. People filling the pews. The altar area filled with flowers. These are beautiful here this morning. We had so many more. Wonderful anthems and songs and hymns. Lifting higher voices in joy, the joy of Easter. The joy of the present risen Christ. The joy of the Lord with us in a special celebration that we have year by year, don't we, as Christians. We expect Easter Sunday to be glorious. We expect it to be beyond the pale in worship. We expect all of the stops on the organ to be out and blasting us. And so Kim did not disappoint us last week (laughs) with the prelude and so on. We were, had a glorious grand Easter morning. Nine o'clock and 11 o'clock services almost filled. Early service, seven o'clock. Not so many, but quite a few people came out for sunrise. What a day. It's a gospel Easter celebration. The risen Christ present with us, restoring and renewing, filling our bodies and minds and spirits with his amazing, amazing grace. It always will be done that way, and it always, I pray, will be that way. But today, after the Easter Sunday, a week later, and as we go into the season of Easter, the old Easter tide, but the Sundays and weeks and days after Easter, it's true that Christ is still with us. We are still followers of Jesus, longing for the lift of the Spirit every day within us as people of God and of his grace. His presence in that special Easter Sunday grace may not be so evident some days as we come into the concerns of life and the organized concerns of the church. Sometimes we actually are able to lay aside the concerns of the organized church, the layers of tradition and theology, and the rules and laws of the discipline, to become happy in the Lord and lose the focus on those things and yet on the main thing, bringing to the fore of our Christian thought and minds that our focus is to always be on Jesus, the risen Lord, but not forgiving the cross, the sacrifice, to get him there and with us. How to be and live in a worldly context of our lives day to day is a challenge for every Christian, no matter how long we have been Christian. If you look at the newspaper and television every day and look, listen to news and the ongoing trials and so on, when will this ever end? When will the conflict and the war and the bickering among people of all kinds cease? When can this grand day come in the risen Christ. He's preparing us, if you would believe in him today, he's preparing us for the day when he will bring it all to fruition 
and that every day that we want to be Easter Day but doesn't feel like it will become that for us as Christians. For we are promised a day when the heavens of heavens will become his forever and the world will be under his control and the people will really act like it and believe it. We long and cherish, I hope, a passionate relationship with Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We refer to Jesus as the Christ, Lord and Savior, Jesus, and so many other ways that we can experience a relationship that has meaning to us. Would you believe that God wants us in an intimate relationship with God? That the Savior wants us in a special relationship with him? I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, then I laid the thought aside and came back to it about what kind of relationship does God want us to have? Does he want us to be hungry for him, desiring him, cherishing him? What are the words that we can come up with that we can be the closest we possibly can to Jesus, the Christ? His presence today and the special presence in the midst of the Savior in this life, this day, the Sunday that reflects back from Easter, the afterglow of Easter. Where is he in us today? May you and the church delight in the Lord. Love him so much that he cannot fail to see us in his fellowship, in his intimate, intimate grace, if you will, picturing arms that we cannot see but know are there outstretched to receive us and to give us what we need every day. Believe it or not, God is not standing in heaven waiting for us to make a mistake, but he's waiting for us to get closer to him. How close are we to each other? When are their closest moments to each other in the body of Christ? I think it's when we're in fellowship. It's when we're enjoying the moment. And that at times, that includes laughter. That includes having a good time. That includes taking even the serious moments and turning them into a levity because it may be some mistake that the foolish preacher makes or misspeaks or does whatever that seems funny. There was a time when the church in the Baroque period had a liturgy for laughter. It was called the Rhesus Pascalis. And the Holy Father of that time pre, uh, declared that the Easter homily had to contain a story that made people laugh so that the church resounded with joyful laughter and all were one together in happiness for, for a moment or two. And that we brought the body together in a laughing, liturgical, symbolical moment of oneness with each other and with Christ. The beautiful symbol of laughter in the midst of even worship, the joy of the Lord, does not exist in isolation but in fellowship with each other and intimacy with God who cares and doesn't care but loves it when we have a good time in his Easter joy. Those first followers of Jesus sensed his presence with them as he blessed and broke the bread with them, which was not, as we would take it, read it, it sounds almost like communion, but it was a table time together. It was not exactly a communion time or Christ instituting the sacrament, but a table meal that they remember him opening then back further in that Emmaus text walk at the beginning of it as he talked with them and rehearsed and told them about all that had happened and what the prophets had said. And he culminates this time with them back with a visit at home at a table. And so they are there with him, enjoying the fellowship. And then they go out later in the text, it says, on the roads and tell the others, oh, we've seen the Lord. He's come back again to be with us in his presence. We must go tell others. We must go on the road let others know. And as they went, they discovered that others knew too that he was still alive. The roads that we travel in this life can take us in many directions, and it's probably a good thing if we travel with who? The risen Savior, the Christ, next to us, close to us, letting him guide us. The closer we get to him, the more heavenly it is to live. The, more, the easier it is to get over those bad, terrible times 
the times of death and destruction in our lives. To realize that the low road less traveled is often the road that leads with Christ into the future, into a new day, with a glow of Easter still upon us, desirable and close as a relationship. Just have a little talk with Jesus. Just have a little blessing of the bread. Just have a little time at the table in his presence. Just have a little time with him warm in your hearts. Let him in so that his power will see through anything and everything, even death. He is risen. He's still risen this day. He appears in simple, unexpected, magnificent ways. This morning in the children's time, I did put a friend back in my former ch church did. I put, a, I, I put a hot dog and a banana, inside a banana. And the kids just thought, ooh, that's surprising. That's glorious, you know. Well, that was kind of fun. It actually, I got it together and it worked. <clears throat> what a joy. <clears throat> Easter Sunday has come and gone. The Eastern Symphony continues in our lives, day, this week, next week, Sunday by Sunday, all the roads we travel into the future, even to Pentecost. So he shows us the way, he shows us how to trust and to be his and to, he will be our guide and lift us along this life's long journey. I woke up one day and I was 70 years old and I thought, oh my. The other day I looked at the newspaper and everybody, every 12 people 70 years old and younger that died. I said, well, it's up to you, Lord, how much time I've got, but I'm going to make sure it is a, a, a joy, a celebration, a rest. Let's make it a celebration today. We don't have to be somber and sad when we come to the table of the Lord or take the elements. Rejoice in the Lord always, the risen Christ. It is his body, his bread, his wine, his cup. What a joy. Amen.